Hello, everyone, and welcome to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. This is Believe in the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Jeff Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh! From 97 won the freak, and that is former Cowboys wide receiver Jesse Holly. Oh, Jesse Holly went 77 yards. It must be a reality show. Who did that play happen against? Hmm. Huh. Let me think. Was that the San Francisco 49ers? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he'll get to the two or he'll get to the two. <laughs> this presentation, of course, is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online, your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online. Cowboys are a four point underdog. Mm. They also feature live betting, free contest giveaways, and they got you covered for every sport, every event NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, golf, whatever. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with that first deposit. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. It's bet online where the game starts. How you doing, Jesse? How you feeling, bud? Almost there. Am, it's about time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I've, I've, I've served my purpose here in this great country. Uh, I'm ready to come back home to my bed to, you know, I know the weather's changed there, but it's been hot and humid here in the 90s, and we've worked outside all day. And Columbia? Yes. So I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to come home. But I'm ready. I'm ready for some cowboy football, baby. Let's when, do, go. when do you come when do you come home? Mananya. Man, manana. Man, but tomorrow, are you trying tomorrow. to say tomorrow or Monday's tomorrow. Yana? Okay. No. Man, manana. I'm manana. Well, Jesse, we have Cowboys 49ers playoff football on Sunday. And yeah. so the, our purpose today is to preview Cowboys 49ers football on Sunday. And I got to tell you, the Vegas line is San Francisco by three and a half or four. You usually get three for home field. So they're calling this game basically a pick them. And on the radio this morning, I picked the 49ers to win by three points. And I could totally see the Cowboys winning by three points. I think it's really tough to call. Um, so basically, I think Vegas is smart. And um I'll just I give you what I think determines the game. Is Brock Purdy going to keep being the best quarterback in football or when he plays against a good defense and will the Cowboys play like a good defense and make life hard on him and suddenly it'll be like, oh, yeah, they do have a rookie quarterback and the Cowboys beat the 49ers. I just can't draw up a different deciding factor, I guess. <laughs> Although, well, I, I mean, mean, maybe oh yeah, I guess the Cowboys could just score 35 to 40 regardless, and then he could play well, and the Cowboys could still win it by outscoring them. But I just think that's the big wild card. Can Dan Quinn make him feel like a rookie for a minute, or is he going to keep putting up stats that say he's the best quarterback in the NFL? You know, we look at this game, and we talk all the time about the players, and, and I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for players. This is a player-driven league. This is a, play, this is a superstar league. Players make this league go around. But there are points in time in football games, especially when you get to this point in time of the season, uh, second round, division round, um, with all your hopes and dreams, everything that you you had in front of you back in May and June and August in training camp is right in front of you. There is a level of preparation that has to come from coaches that have, to me, um, a serious determining factor in these football games uh, because – you are who you are, and it's on film. That's fact, right? Like at this point in time of the season, you know, players aren't changing their game in the ninth inning. Teams aren't changing their who they are in the ninth inning. We saw that. We saw what happened last year when the Cowboys tried to put pads on towards the last week of the season to get a physical against the same. It didn't work well because that's not who you are. That's not who you are. It's not who you've been, and, and the other team was exactly who they were, and it, and it, and it won out. But there's going to be a level of, and you mentioned it, with can Dan Quinn, can uh, Mike McCarthy slash Kellen Moore, can Kyle Shanahan, like that's, I think that's going to be kind of a ping pong type conversation throughout the entire game is can these coordinators put together game plans, especially when you're going, you know, when you get to this point, you're going strength on strength. There, there are 
Okay. There aren't very many matches across the board. It, it is pretty much strength on strength. And can these coordinators, whether it be those of the Cowboys or those of the Niners, put together a plan that can give them a distinct advantage? I always say coaches are responsible for one, at least two games during the year. Um, I don't know if playoffs comes into that, so to speak, but this is one of those times where one of these coordinators or a pair of these coordinators are going to have to do something. And I, I add D'Amico Ryan to that too, the defense coordinator. These coordinators are going to have to show up and show out today. I mean, excuse me, Sunday to have a, a, a determining factor in this football game. Yeah. So the, like the individual, I guess the opportunities for the Cowboys, when you look at the 49ers uh, playing defensive football and you see a defensive line, that's got Nick Bosa and Javon Kinlaw and Eric Armstead, like they got, they got the big boys and they've got good linebackers. So I guess I would be surprised if the Cowboys could consistently run the ball. Well, Uh, if you can, I think it's a great bonus, but I would be surprised if you were able to create running lanes with regularity against San Francisco. And so I would think you're coming into this one saying the same thing that Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones said a week ago where they knew, uh, hell, they announced on the game broadcast that the reason they put out the offensive line they did to start was because they felt like that was their best pass protection and they thought it was going to be up to Dak to take them to victory. And tell me if you think I'm wrong here, but I think that's that's the recipe again. If you can run it, that's great. But I'll be a little bit surprised. Your opportunity is going to be, can my quarterback outscore you? Well, well, you're talking about that offensive line uh, the report just came out. Jason Peters is out. Right. So he won't play in this football game. Jerron Curse is, is questionable. So that lineup that you had a week ago, and, and I get it, you didn't finish the game, but the game was pretty much won by the time Peters went out the football game. You know, is this a lineup now that you feel comfortable with? You, you know, with Tyler Smith moving back to left tackle and Connor McGovern coming back into left guard, you know, will that be able to hold up? Will, you know, will those guys not give up those creases? Um, and while Dak has been phenomenal at a, a large majority of this year when he's come back, there has been these dips and these ebbs and flows in his game. We've seen him, we've seen him be like last week. I, I mean, not just Dak Prescott. I, there are quarterbacks that we've watched across this league in our time covering it, watching it, being a fan of it, myself playing in it, that wasn't as sharp as in command, as controlling, as accurate, as just on freaking fire as Dak Prescott was last week. But two weeks ago, we saw Dak Prescott in Washington who couldn't hit the wide side of the barn. And so while they're, they, and they're both in there, they're both in there. They, they're both, they both are inside the number four jersey. And if you can, if you can guarantee me that we see more of last week's Dak Prescott and not two weeks ago's Dak Prescott. I like it. I, I like that he was just so – I mean, the ball was coming out right now. Like, he had his decision made. It was coming. It was it was, had zip on it. And, and that's that's what you want. That took me back to, you know, as, as Nate Newton said, rookie Dak, where he was just, hey, the ball's going right here. It's going there right now. Get the ball to my playmakers, and we're going to move down the field. Uh, no second guessing. No, no patting that thing two, three times. Uh, running when the situation called for it. Like there, it was just so special to watch that caliber of player again because we see that – we know that's in them. Um, so that's going to have to be what they have this week if they're going to get to that point of, hey, we're going to pass this ball around the park. and and But Dak has to be that Dak. And there, it, I think San Francisco is a really unique challenge for Dallas because of the way that all of this matches up, that their front six can stop the run. They're the best run-stopping team in football. But one of those six guys, Fred Warner, is probably the best coverage linebacker in football. So San Francisco is also the team that over the course of this year, they're the hardest to throw the ball up the seam on and in that sort of zone because Fred Warner kind of covers it. Um, and so there are like there's a lot of ways I'm looking at this game and I'm going, okay, 49ers run defense very, very good. Fred Warner takes away the ability for those seams against a lot of teams. Um, they're run defense is better than their pass defense. But when you're talking about where are you going to throw on them, the middle is not, it's not off limits, but it, they make it harder than anybody. Like I just stack up a bunch of ways where it's like, Ooh, they, the 49ers are going to be tough to beat. And uh, they are, they are. But it, I look at that Seattle game and there are some chances outside. I'm not saying that we have a DK Metcalf, but we do have a CD lamp. I, I truly believe that CD has begun to, has begun the ascension into that category of top flight 
wide receiver one in the National Football League. Wherever you put him at is where you put him at. That's fine. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have time to get into that. But there are chances for CeeDee Lamb to win on the outside. And, I, and this is one of those games where goods damn well better be good, right? This isn't time for your goods not to be good. And you you have to challenge those DBs out on the outside. Um, and, and, again, Dak being able to control that middle of the field because – that 2.0, that, that Troy Palomaro 2.0, he's roaming back there. He, he, he's watching the eyes. But there are opportunities for Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lambda to hook up on the outside. Yeah, I think that is probably the best opportunity is they the 49ers are in a kind of a cowboy spot where they ran out of corners because Emmanuel Mosley got hurt. And now they've got Lenore playing on that side. Offense is right. Uh and I just, I don't know, like Michael Gallup hasn't left it, put a big impact on a lot of games this year, but their biggest weakness is one of their corners. And I hope that Kellen Moore, whether it's CD or whether it's somebody else that manages to do it, I hope they find a way to go after that guy because you can do the 49er defense and go, okay, tell me about, and I can go four across the defensive linebacker, all very good. Two linebackers, very good. Safeties, solid. Um, Ward, pretty good corner. Other ward, okay, out here, Mark. The Mark is out there. <laughs> and will the Cowboys be able to take advantage of that? Uh, and will the Cowboys, and I, I have some hope also that the Cowboys have a defense that's better than what Brock Purdy's been playing against. I saw the numbers the other day. Brock Purdy's average defense he's played against as the Niners starting quarterback is 24th in the league. That's the average. So they haven't seen a lot of good defenses. And I loved Micah Parsons' quotes, both of them. One, it was like, have you seen weapons this good this year? And he's like, no, but I don't think they've seen anybody like us either. And then he also did the, uh, I remember last year, all the Cowboy players got so mad because people were like, 49ers are going to beat you up. They play tough football. And before they even got to the game, people were like, we're tough. We're tough. And Parsons was like, I don't even care about tough. He's like, if, you, uh, if I play their game, they're going to beat my ass. I'm going to play my game, and we're going to see, you know, whose game is going to hold up. So uh, I'm excited for the game because the Cowboys have the better quarterback. Outside of that, the 49ers have the better team. <laughs> better quarterbacks win football games. Yeah, I'm banking on do. it. I'm banking on it. I need it because I don't want to be done covering the Cowboys yet. It's not draft season for me yet. I need to do it one more time, two more times, three more times. And and, and this is, you know, quarterbacks are built in the, in the, in the regular season. They're made in the playoffs. You want your name. You want the doubting – and I don't know if it'll stop or not, but you 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 wanna you wanna put you wanna put it into a lot of stuff like that. You are gonna beat this football team. You you as Dak Prescott, you go in and you put in another performance. Now you're talking about all right when this when this whole thing gets scrambled out. We start talking about what quarterbacks are in the top five and who's in the elite level, who's this and all that. You now get your name uh, mentioned uh, seriously in that conversation. It, it not not some stuff and fluff stats, but you go and say, hey, you know, I beat this team in the playoffs. I've gotten this team now back to the NFC Championship game where they have not been since only 10 guys on this football team was even born back in 95. Uh, yeah, that, that, that puts you in a different, you know, no quarterback has gotten to the NFC Championship game since Troy Aikman. So that puts you in a conversation, you know, you can, whether the Romo-Dak debate will come up, well, well, well Dak took his team to the NFC Championship game. Hey, 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 hey. Both hey, good. You know? They're both very good. You know, but you can have those conversations now and you can put your name in that conversation of, hey, this is why I get paid what I pay. And, now, and also, you, know, you want to start talking about your contract being kind of restructured again and you want to get some more money out of the situation. You carry this thing on up, you know, get to win like this and carry this team to a to a you know opportunity to go play in the NFC, NFC championship game. Your, your numbers look different. You know, you go to the table looking a little bit different. You, you can slam your balls on the table then and go, hey, pay me some more. I can see the Cowboys needing one of these three things to happen. Tell me if you think I can get one of these three three things to happen in this game. Either Micah Parsons gets home, strip sack, Trayvon Diggs, pick six. We finally get the Turpin return. Do you think one of those three things will happen? Yeah, I've given up on the Turpin return. I don't think that's a realistic thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's Micah. Mike, Micah is your game wrecker. Like Micah, to me, and even with the skills of, of Diggs, Diggs, the thing about Diggs, like he can only be a game wrecker if people give him an opportunity to, 
right? Like Micah doesn't need an opportunity to get one. Like he can, he can wreck a game by himself, right? He can, he can, he can hit a running back and make him fumble, sack a quarterback. He, he, he can create, he can create chaos in a lot of different ways without having the effect of someone. So that is more realistic than anything. Because I do think while while Brock Purdy may practice against a really good defense every single day, he doesn't feel the heat from that defense. They don't tag him, they don't hit him, they don't they don't tap his arm. You know, when they get home, they kind of run by him, and and he doesn't really feel that. So I think with Micah Parsons, especially with him going good on good against Trent Williams, um, that's going to be a matchup that I think Micah Parsons is one of those players where the bigger the moment, the bigger the matchup, the bigger the player he is, and I can see him. You know, getting around, winning a matchup against Trip Williams inside or outside, and getting home to the quarterback and creating that. So if I had to pick one of the three, to me, it's definitely the Micah Parsons, as as Baldy would say, the MPP, the Micah Parsons problem. See if uh, if I were Micah's coach, he'd hate me because I'd be like, "Hey, you're going to rush over uh, Mike McGlinchey." No, I want to beat the best. I'd be like, I don't want you to beat the best. I want you to beat the guy more often. I want you to go over there. <laughs> I want you to handle up on that guy. Uh, one wild card I wonder about for this game, because last week, I think it was only like 20 snaps, but it seemed like something they were going to a decent amount, and maybe they will continue to, is since the Cowboys couldn't find a third good corner, Israel Mukwamu became a corner. He, he was one in college. But you had a big old 6'4 dude in the slot on a bunch of snaps. And I wonder if that actually is a good matchup here on a team that wants to use tight ends, wants to use misdirection, wants to run the ball 40 times and throw it 20 if they can get away with it. I wonder if that could actually help you out, that the Cowboys now are going to be playing with, God, a lot of times they're playing four safeties. They'll have Mukwamu, right. Curse, Hooker, uh, Donovan Wilson, all on the field at the same time. I wonder if that doesn't give the Cowboys a better chance to make the 49ers Brock Purdy reliant. Because if you make them Brock Purdy reliant, I don't care what his stats are. He's going to end up looking like a rookie. If you make them have more passing situations than situations where it's a balanced down and distance and they could do anything. You, you make Brock Purdy beat you. And I think Micah Parsons is going to beat Brock Purdy. Put on your Jeff Cavanaugh draft DB evaluation hat for a second. What is the one knock when it comes to DBs who are six, two, six, three, six, four feet, change of direction, matching routes. Absolutely. What is something that, Man, uh, Kyle Shanahan is really good at uh, getting people open with route combinations. So th that, that's <laughs> okay. that's my only concern is is that you're going to now have to face slot receivers that are going to do misdirection, that are going to come in motion, that are going to go one way and come back out. And so, you know, are you do you have the hip flexibility and the game experience? Because again, Kyle is going to make things look different they're gonna look one way and end another way do you have to get in and out of breaks to cover those routes that may start over this way and come back this way that may start this way and come back this way and the route combination that they'll be doing with tight ends and running backs and all that kind of stuff is 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 he in that elk right now you think he can handle that for 25 snaps in the football game because you know kyle's gonna find he's gonna find our mark gonna find our mark and he's gonna say how can I call a play that gets the guy that I want to have run that route on him? Oh, there it is. We're going to run that play. Yeah. And they, the, I guess the, the good thing about that is the 49ers, I'd have to go down further on their depth chart, but their top three wide receivers, Ayuk's full size, Debo's full size, and Jawan Jennings is 6'3". Like, they're all big dudes. Kyle Shanahan is just really good. <laughs> He's just really good. Because, like, I don't, none of those guys, I think, are just going to totally route you up. It's at least if you're playing man, it's just that they are some big bodied, tough after the catch sons of biscuits. And so I hope we see Mukwama because what would really worry me is if we were running Xavier Rhodes out there a bunch against either Debo or Ayuk. Ayuk's a burner. Debo's just Debo. Uh, and so now I've kind of talked myself into like, I want Mukwamu out there all the time. I don't want to see, I don't want to see old people who, or on the couch not too long ago trying to chase wide receivers on the outside. Just give me all Boy, the Mukwamu and go get them, Micah. Didn't Xavier Rose look struggling when he was trying to chase – he was trying to chase down. He thought he, 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 thought oh. he had safety help, Jesse. He thought he had safety help. That's fine. But he still – he looked like me in San Francisco. Just – your mentals are telling you – He's going. Like, he knew that's why he's running. Like, where's my yeah. – where, where. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I mean, it's it's going to be an interesting matchup, and that's, that's the thing, and – with a guy like Izzy is 
you know, be eye disciplined. You got to be eye disciplined. You got to be, you know, uh, assignment sound because the misdirection is coming. It's coming. The motions are coming. The misdirections are coming. And who started out as the number two guy will end up the number four guy in the route combination, right? And, and, your, and your route count and your receiver count. It's like, oh, all right, he's number two. And then by the time it's done, it's like, oh, snap, he's no longer number two. He's number four. And I should have passed that off to someone else. But I'm chasing him. And now the other guy who thought now he's chasing the same guy I'm chasing. And there's Brandon Ayuk running butt naked somewhere. So, But it's going to – it's defensively, it's going to start and stop up front. That's where it's going to have to happen. Up front, they're going to try to get the run game going, whether it's um, whether it's McCaffrey or whether it's uh, Elijah, Elijah Mitchell. They're going to try. Or Debo. Or Debo, right? They're going to try. And my, the, the MPP, the Micah Parsons problem, he has to – the big-time players have to show up in this big-time game. I, I am excited, really excited to see Micah in this game because he's one of those guys like – we, we've been on this defense and these defensive players long enough. A lot of them are lip service. A lot of them talk about, I'm ready. I'll, da, da, da. Then you get in the game, you'd be like, where the hell did you go for four quarters? Mike is different. Oh, yeah. He, he's going to be there. <laughs> Mike is going to be there. Uh, I have four predictions for the game. 27-24 Niners, 27-24 Cowboys, 30-27 Niners, and 30-27 Cowboys. Flip a coin, you get one of those four results. I made four predictions. My mind's telling me no, but my body <laughs> pick the Cowboys. <laughs> my 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 heart wants me to pick the Cowboys. It really does, and my head wants me to pick the Niners. Um, so it's thirty to twenty-seven, one of them, or twenty-seven yes. twenty-four, one of them. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm, I'm gonna go twenty-seven twenty-four. <laughs> Cowboys. Hey, hey, hey! I mean, my first official was 27 24 Niners, but I'm telling you, I have no idea. Flip the coin. Yeah. Let's see. It's going to be a good yeah, game. Thanks for selling me out. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for throwing me out there. You know, I know you put your prediction in early, but it was like, yeah, I have no idea. After I make my prediction, I could have said that too. I have no idea. No, I, I don't. I, I'm, You're I'm good. You picked the Cowboys. Forth. People are going to love you. I'm I the know. hater now. Oh, they kicked, they kicked my butt last week, boy. They were on me last week. I'm but picking I'm, the 49ers. Yeah, my 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 head wants me to say my head and eyes wants me to say Niners. My heart is saying Cowboys. But understand this, people: like when we pick another team, like we're not actively rooting for that team to win. Like we're taking what we right. Like we're taking our assessment and looking like what from film we watched and from our experiences, and we're going all right. This is what we believe will happen in this game. But if if Jeff picks the Niners or I pick Tampa Bay, it's still go Cowboys. Like it is always. Go Cowboys forever and a day and twice on Sunday. So don't think because if someone picks opposite of the Cowboys that we're at, we're, we're watching the game like, hell yeah, Brock Purdy. Let's go, Brock. Let's, let's go, George Kittle. No, we're not saying that. We're no, saying, what I'm saying is Kittle. San Francisco is better at like 15 of the 22 spots, but you're better at the most important one. And I hope yeah. that's I hope that matters enough to get the job done. But Kyle Shanahan can hide the son of a biscuit. They're freaking quarterback proof. Uh, Cowboys 50, 49ers zero, my new official prediction. Uh, Jesse, I'm good here. You good here? I'm, I'm, I'm delicious. Remember, you have no idea what anyone is going through or what Jesse just said. So be cool to everyone. We love you. Bye. Eliminate the contingencies. Delicious.